What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome to another VGC 2022 video. Today I'm going to be talking about what I think are the winners and losers of the transition from Series 11 to Series 12 aka VGC 2022. But before I get into that, do me a favor, if you guys enjoy this video at any point in time, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications because I bring you daily VGC content. And that's my comment question of the day. What are your top five most improved and, you know, most worsened Pokemon that got worse? Uh, Pokemon in the format. Uh, I did a video about restricted Pokemon that got better in the format uh, in the form of a YouTube short and a TikTok. Uh, however, this is going to be more broad and I won't be including a few of the Pokemon in that video, or one of the Pokemon, I guess. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna be more in depth with this one, so let's go ahead and get into it. Also, be sure to check out my Patreon and my Discord, both are linked down below if you want any bonus content, or if you wanna just, you know, stay updated on the channel, the Discord's a great place to do it. But let's go ahead and start with Eveltal. So I have five winners and five losers for the Series 12 format, um, and these are just clear winners. Like, these are Pokemon that got much better, or at least are much more usable than they were before. Uh, and a lot of them are due to the existence of Zacian and Rain, and a lot of the Pokemon that got worse are due to the existence of Zacian and Rain. There's always something, you know? There's always, like, a dominating force in the format that causes things to sort of um, mold themselves around it. But let's start. So Eveltal gets a lot better um, now that Zacian can be next to it. Basically, Eveltal was a restricted in Series 11 that you could run pretty reliably. Uh, it had a really, really good matchup versus two of the best restricteds in the format uh, being, or I guess three. It had a good matchup versus Kyogre, and it had a great matchup versus the Calyrex forms. Um, on top of that, versus a lot of other restricteds, it was able to hold its own. Like, it could foul play to two-hit KO Pokemon like Groudon. Foul play would, like, do a ton of Zacian if you managed to avoid getting play roughed, which a lot of them were running Behemoth Blades, so you had to run a lot of bulk in this guy. Um, but also just like being able to snarl support the rest of your team or just run them as an all out special attacker with like a life orb um, or an assault vest or something like that. Uh, it made it really, really solid. And with Dynamax Max Airstream, it was super easy to just put a weakness policy on the guy. Um, but it fell short versus fairy types, obviously. While Xerneas wasn't the best Pokemon in the format, um, other fairies were capable of one shotting it, namely Play Rough Zacian. Um, but it also got walled out by. Tapu Fini, uh, most notably, uh, as well as it didn't like facing off versus Regieleki and Thunderous, so those were things to keep in mind when you used it. It can sort of patch those holes now that it can run Zacian next to it, because Zacian, of course, is a fairy destroyer. It's like a traitor against its own kind. It's a fairy itself, but it's like, nah, man, I'm embracing the steel side of myself, and I'm gonna just KO fairies left and right. Uh, but also, it's just that now that it can run Zacian next to it, it has a better defensive synergy than... It would have if you had an alternative seal type. Zacian is just such a splashable Pokemon that if you want to run like hyper offensive Veltal, you no longer have to put like a Ferrothorn or like a Stag Attack in the back that kind of it kind of switches up how you're playing. Like it really lowers the speed tier of your whole team. Now, if you want to just go like all out hyper offense, max airstream with a strong seal type next to it, you're good. Uh, I would personally recommend Bulky Zacian if you're running Eveltal, mainly because obviously Eveltal is gonna really like that assault vest in Zacian. You know, if it gets a couple of snarls off next to it, then Zacian won't really mind uh, taking a water spot or two. So yeah, Eveltal is phenomenal. I think it's super good versus a lot of the best Pokemon in the format, namely like Kyogre and Palkia. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and move on to Incineroar. Incineroar is a very easy one to explain. Once again, Zacian's more popular, so you need more Intimidate. Uh, but also, Venusaur is going to get more popular since it's much easier to use Sun, since Groudon can have Zacian next to it, if you're noticing a trend here. Uh, basically, Incineroar is an invaluable Pokemon. It can do so many things for so many teams, and the basic gist of it is, while you could probably get away with running Incineroar in the previous format, it's a lot harder not to run Incineroar now that uh, Zacian's on like half of the team. So, uh, yeah, you want to intimidate things, and he's one of the best resistances not only for you know Zacian itself, uh, but for Calyrex Ice Rider if you manage to not get max quaked. Uh, it's a hard check for. Calyrex Shadow Rider, um, and it's just like a good Intimidator all around, like being able to lower damage output from Pokemon across the board is never going to be bad. Next is Zygarde Complete. Zygarde Complete, I've made a video about this guy all to himself, uh, but I genuinely think that Zygarde Complete is pretty viable in the format. Um, I 
obviously recommended you run it next to Zamazenta due to the fact that Zamazenta provides it quite a lot of support with coaching plus coil, uh, as well as snarl on the Zamazenta and the fact that it can remove fairies, but you can honestly get away with just running a standard setup Zygarde next to a Zacian itself because Zacian does a lot of the things that Zamazenta would do offensively at the cost of um, the defensive synergy. Basically, it's just going to be able to annihilate things and put a lot of pressure in the field while your Zygarde sets up coils. Uh, essentially, if, if you have a Zacian and a Zygarde on the field at the same time, and your opponent has to choose which one of those to target, they're probably going to go with the most immediate source of damage being the Zacian, so you can just go ahead and like get free coils, which is really funny. Obviously, they're very intimidate weak um, when you pair them together, but uh, Zacian doesn't tend to mind because it can always just Swords Dance or get off a Substitute, so the Intimidates don't really matter. Uh, Zygard Complete has positive matchups versus a few things in the format. Uh, after a coil, um, or I guess like coil negates the damage that foul play would be doing to it if it just attack boosted. So uh, because you're not running a lot of attack on it before you dynamax it or before you coil up, uh, it's really just going to be like the same damage every single time, which is mostly negligible. Uh, Zacian or Zygarde's also able to have a good matchup against opposing Zacian because after like a single coil, Behemoth Blade and Player Off sort of bounce off this guy, uh, especially when you Dynamax. Thousand Arrows is able to hit flying targets, so you can smack down Pokemon like Thunderous and then hit it the next turn for super effective damage. And it just hardwalls things like Regieleki. Uh, Kyogre is probably its like worst matchup in the game, but even then, you still tank Ice Beams, and at plus two, your Max Quake's going to be able to deal quite a bit of damage to that thing. Next is Palkia. Palkia is interesting in that it just got better because Zacian exists, and that's like the sole reason. Uh, previously, Palkia was used because Zacian couldn't really attack it. It was mainly just like a Trick Room Pokemon with... Uh, it would run Hydro Pump, it would run Spatial Rend, and it would either run like Protect or if you didn't want to run Protect, you could run a Fire Coverage move or even like Earth Power if you really wanted to, but usually it was usually it was Protect. Usually you would run Protect. Um, but now, you know, you can do that exact same thing with like your Lustrous Orb and stuff and just put it next to a Zacian. The Zacian deals with the fairy types that it doesn't want to deal with, Tapu Fini, which obviously completely walls out Palkia to no end. Um, is just able to be two it KO'd by uh, Zacian pretty cleanly. Uh, obviously, Zacian doesn't like facing off against Incineroar, uh, and Palkia is like a good partner for that reason. It's able to one shot Incineroar with Hydro Pumps uh, with the Lustrous Orb boost. And yeah, uh, I mean, like a standard Palkia Zacian team would literally just be like Palkia, Zacian, Rillaboom, Incineroar, like just the most splashable Pokemon. Basically, Palkia became a lot more splashable. Like, it's it's much easier to use than it would have been in uh, previous formats. Uh, like, I, I guess, like, it's problematic matchups like Eveltal, which could snarl it. Uh, it doesn't like face off against Zacian, like I said earlier. So, yeah, everything has just been boosted by Zacian, which is just funny because, you know, their viability rides on this Pokemon. <laughs> and Zacian itself, I don't need to explain too much about why Zacian is the biggest winner of this format. Basically, what happened is everyone got a free dog slot on their team. And yeah, you could run something that isn't Zacian, but uh, in a format where you have a Dynamax target, let's say you have a Venusaur that would usually want a Dynamax, and you have a uh, Sun Pokemon like Groudon, which is your restricted because Venusaur Groudon was a thing in the previous format. You want to be able to Dynamax your Groudon, but you also want to be able to Dynamax your, your Venusaur, but, you know, Groudon is just more of a backup plan. By running Zacian, um, you essentially have two Dynamax Pokemon and two Restricteds, because Zacian hits as hard as a Dynamax Pokemon against Dynamax Pokemon. Uh, so, yeah, it's it makes it much harder to justify not running Zacian on your team. But, yeah, uh, that's, that's it for the five winners. Uh, to, now, I guess we just go on to the five losers, and these ones are going to be a little bit harder to... Uh, explain and some of them might be a little bit controversial but let's let's begin with the one that I'm least confident is a loser in this format uh, Amoongus I have had Amoongus on a couple of teams so far and it is very hard to justify using Amoongus in a format where Trick Room isn't quite as good as it used to be I think I think Amoongus is still great right Amoongus is still going to be great but it's probably it's probably just kind of good next to like Calyrex where now it's like if I'm not running Rillaboom, I feel like it's not pulling its weight. Also, like, Amoongus could be good next to, like, Zygarde for Pollen Puff stuff. But it's just been hard to get off, um, 
water spout, not water spout. It's, it's been hard to get off uh, spores versus uh, opposing restricteds because of how omnipresent Tapu Fini is, uh, how important lumberries are, and just it, it doesn't seem to be pulling its weight for the most part. Uh, its main reason that it existed was to better perform against Pokemon like Xerneas and I suppose versus Groudon if you really were able to eat a hit because uh, it could just put those two to sleep and I guess not even Groudon like it was good versus Zacian dude like we gotta sleep versus Zacian basically sleep is just good right uh, but the amount of Tapu Fini running around makes it hard to use the amount of max air streamers running around especially now that um, a lot of Tornadus are Dynamaxing and a lot of Evelta are Dynamaxing because they're better in the format uh, makes Amoongus very difficult to use. Like, you, obviously, it's always going to be good. You could still run your, like, Citrus Berry or, you know, Koba Berry if you really wanted to, to take the Max Airstream. Uh, and then you just run, like, the standard Spore, Rage Powder, uh, Protect, and Clear Smog or whatever. Uh, and, and it's still going to be good, right? But it's it's not as good. That's, that's like, the main reason I put it down here because it's a noticeable decline in usefulness. It's still going to be good, but it's just, it's not what it used to be. But uh, next is Xerneas, and this one's really easy to explain. Like 99% of teams have a Zacian. <laughs> uh, and a lot of Pokemon uh, on those teams are also good versus Xerneas, because we have Incineroar and Rillaboom, who can fake out Xerneas on the turn it wants to go for Geomancy, and, you know, Snarl it, do whatever. It's harder for Xerneas to get anything going. Even with a partner next to it, it's hard for Xerneas to just do its thing. On top of that, when Dynamax exists in general, Xerneas isn't that great uh, because it can be one-shot by random max steel spikes, it can be max airstream past its uh, Geomancy speed boost, uh, and on top of everything, even after you get off your Geomancy, it just doesn't seem to be hitting quite as hard despite you Dynamaxing this thing and hitting a plus two max fairy move in Fairy Aura. It, it just it doesn't hit quite as hard because other Pokemon can Dynamax. Uh, and Zacian just straight up doesn't care that you Dynamaxed, it's still one-shotting you because you didn't boost your physical defense, you just boosted your special defense. So, while Xerneas is good in, like, Series 10 where there was no Dynamax, it's just not as viable now because Dynamax exists and Zacian's on most teams. Colossal! Colossal got worse because Rain got so much better. Uh, Rain is much easier to use now, uh, obviously, because it, you can run two restricted Pokemon on the same team. You can run Kyogre. Plus, Groudon, if you really want, like, a Sun Pokemon to hard check Colossal in case it just so happens to, you know, get the speed boost anyways. And you're like, oh, I'm going to get Solar Beamed. And it's like, oh, hey, look, two Pokemon in the field that could one-shot me, both of which have double target spread moves. I can't choose which one to defend against, and follow me isn't really going to help. So, like, I'm, I'm kind of screwed no matter what. Uh, but also, yeah, it's just, it's just Rain is too good. <laughs> Rain's too good for Colossal to really do anything. Uh, and that's been uh, a big issue for it. Yeah, I really don't know how else to explain it. Uh, Colossal is still very good. Like, on honestly, you can still run it with, like, Eveltalization. Uh, and it's going to be a great Pokemon. But it's not quite as good as it used to be. And it has a lot more problematic matchups than it did in the previous format. Entei. Entei was mostly used as just, like, a Sacred Fire machine. You could, like, Choice Bandit. You could Choice Scarf it and run, like, Eruption. Um, but it's, it's damage output is really only good when there's one restricted or when there's no Dynamax. And both of those conditions are kind of gone. Entei itself isn't the best Dynamax Pokemon and Fairy or not Fairy, and, uh, Misty Terrain is kind of everywhere. Uh, so you're less likely to be landing those Sacred Fires. And while it is still pretty good into, um, opposing Zacian, uh, you're, you know, it's, it's hard to fit it on your team when you would rather have something like an Incineroar or really like any other fire type right now. I, I could still find a use for it, you know, if you ran like a, a Scarf Entei with like Choice Scarf Eruption on like a Groudon Sun team, and that could still be fine, right? But it's it's damage output, like I said, is noticeably, it, it feels noticeably lower because of the fact that things can just double their HP randomly. So yeah, Entei, quite a big drop, uh, and it, it could still find a niche, I think, but it's not going to be great on most teams. Moltres. Mostly you would see Moltres in Dynamax restricted formats when you had like a Zacian on the team, right? Or um, you just needed like a, a dark type Max Airstream or something something of the sort, right? Uh, but now if you have a Moltres on your team, you're going to look at yourself and think, 
wouldn't I be much better running Eveltal? And the comparison between these two is kind of like, yeah, I, I should be running Eveltal. Everything that Moltres does, Eveltal does better beyond, I guess, weakness policy because Moltres gets Berserk. Uh, but Eveltal can still weakness policy about as good as Moltres does. 90 HP, 126 HP, 90 defense, 95 defense, 100 special attack, 131 special attack. 125 special defense. Okay, you got to beat there, but the 126 HP helps. And the 99 speed versus the 90 speed. Yeah, like the fact that you can run too restricted means that there's very little reason to run Moltres at all. Moltres was still pretty good in like Dynamax restricted formats because it could Dynamax itself and hit pretty hard versus uh, things like Kyogre. It would be able to wall it out with like an Assault Vest set with Snarl. It was basically like a mini Eveltal, but when you know, you're running mini Eveltal, and Eveltal's right there, you kind of got, you kind of got to be like, all right, buddy, I'm going to take you off the team, uh, go sit on the bench and have a juice box, your dad's here, he's going to be subbing in for a couple of games, that's what it's like when you run Moltres in this format, you'll think to yourself, why am I not running Eveltal? So yeah, uh, I think those are some of the five biggest losers in the new restricted format, mainly when I say losers and winners, I mean Pokemon who were used like a decent amount in the previous format that either went up or down. Obviously, I can say Zigzagoon isn't good in this format. And that'd just be like, yeah, yeah, I knew that way. You even tell me. But yeah, uh, that's gonna be it for this video. If you guys enjoyed, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel, turn notifications, and check out all the links down below, Patreon, Discord, whatever. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.